Hey, Captain Matt, Boat Buyer Secret Weapon here. I've got the opportunity to uh, demo a Sea Keeper. I've got um, Captain Brian. Captain Brian. And um, Brooke Stevens with Sea Keeper. And Jonathan Parmet, passenger. If you haven't experienced the Sea Keeper, um, we're going to show it to you. It's, it's incredible. But they are now able to put it, what'd you say, a 23 foot? Uh, and, and, and again, it depends on your boat, but you can get it on a 23 foot boat. It's got to have the, what kind of space do you need down in the, um, the compartment to put it? Uh, the Sea Keeper 1 is our smallest unit to date. Uh, where we really cut down on a lot of the, 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 the footprint is really the height. It's only about 15 inches high. So we can uh, you know, put it down below deck in a lot of circumstances where maybe you could have before. Uh, we're putting them under a lot of leaning posts on center consoles, for instance. Um, so it's the smallest of our three 12 volt units. And then when we get up to the Seakeeper 5 and up, uh, they're, uh, they're AC powered from there. So let's talk Seakeeper 1. What do you need to, to put one on your boat? If you're like, damn, that would be nice. <laughs> I, when you see the boat rocking and rolling and then you see it, uh, I mean, instantly shut off almost and just go to flat and level. Um, what do you need besides that that amount of space? Yeah, the, the real estate's important, obviously. Uh, once you establish where you're going to put it, and it, it doesn't need to be on center line or, or anywhere in particular. We just don't want to be too far forward on a planing haul. That's really our only restriction in terms of where it may go, um, aside from weight distribution that you need to consider. But uh, really, you just need to find a space where you can structurally attach it to the hull whether that be down below deck in the grid or the stringers of, of the vessel or we can bond a, a plate down it, it's a flush mount unit it's our only flush mount uh, system so you could bond a plate down to a deck and you know, grind the gel coat off bond it down with plexus adhesive and then bolt straight to that plate so that uh, opens up a lot of options for us as well. If you can find space under a leaning post or maybe down in a center console, for instance. And then getting power, you have to have power from somewhere. Yep, uh, it's a 12 volt system. So, um, you know, a lot of the smaller boats may not have generators on board, but uh, you can certainly run the system off the engine alternators or, or, or batteries um, with the engines off. But two Group 27 AGM batteries will typically run the unit maybe three or four hours, depending on the, the sea state you're in and how hard it's working and other DC systems on board, of course. But if, if, if that's a dedicated bank for the Seakeeper, it should run it for three or four hours, that's it. Awesome. awesome, well, let's check it out. I'm going to go ahead and kind of just sit here in this back angle. I'm kind of feeling it's going to help with my back. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the, again, everybody's going to figure out or, or think of a different way to apply it on why it's so, you know, what they notice. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the Sea Keeper uh, uh, locked or disengaged. Uh, we call it locked. But we're just hydraulically locking the spear in place so it's not reset for now. Two good rocks. Right there. Oh, here we go. Go ahead and engage it and right 
now. Okay. Oh, so it fires up that quick. Okay. It, yeah. It's just in standby yeah, mode? Or it's I mean, in standby. It's, okay. it's locked. Hydraulic lock. It's disengaged. Whatever okay. verbiage you want to use. Um, but it's the flywheel is still spinning there at full RPM. We're just hydraulically locking that spear in place, not allowing it to preset gotcha. for okay. now. Secret how fast that thing goes. That one's that. It's like yeah. 34, 35 knots. No, Cruz is 31. Wow. I had a letter on it. Oh, you were still in when that was out? Yeah. I used to meet up with them offshore, and they took me to tow, and they took the 30 years across, and then they sent me out. So it's a starboard side roll, right? Because yeah. it's coming from starboard, so the ball is going to precess forward. And if it's adjusting for getting hit by a wave on the port side, the ball is going to roll out. Okay. And that just has to do with the, fly, the direction of flywheel spinning and which way it's exerting the force into the gimbal. Like, I, I, so just, it's a simple... And it's very simple. Yeah, I mean, the it's... meat and potatoes behind is the software. That's where okay. having that hydraulically using an uh, accelerometer to know wave, it's constantly measuring wave height, wave frequency. And then, you know, so imagine you're in a short, nasty chop. The way a gyroscope works is 90 degrees forward, 90 degrees aft, it stops working, okay? So we stop at 70 to 70. Okay. Right? So imagine you're in a really na a short, choppy, straight up and down, nasty little chop. That gyro is constantly, the physics is gonna try to make it stop as quickly as possible. But, what if a 10 foot roller swell comes and it only goes a little bit up the wave and then it hits and stops and won't do anything? Right. The software is constantly measuring and it's automatically going to measure, hey, this is a bigger wave and it slows down the rate of which it's allowed to roll to completely finish the whole stroke of that okay. wave. That's where the, that's where the, the, the money is, it's right, in that right. software and then doing the constant testing, um, you know, really? thousands of hours of testing. I mean, obviously, we didn't invent a gyroscope. Right, yeah. right. We just figured out how to make it light so enough and not draw enough power to be on a boat to be feasible. Yeah, yeah. So the the competition that just came in the market, are they they develop their own software? I mean, uh, the software years behind you. Guys, right? uh, yeah, I mean, we own certain patents that that really allow us to do that. Um, uh, those things, and it's it's very difficult yeah, for them to never been. Uh, you know, try to recreate those patterns yeah, that we've got to stay outside of your patent per, area. Correct. Okay. You know, and then we're we're started in 2003, shipped in 2008. So you know, we got that many years ahead of yeah. of competition um, that that we've put in blood, sweat, and tears to figure out. How long you doing? Uh, five years. So done. And uh, yeah, we and I, you know, when I'm when I'm not working shows and doing all that, I've literally used the first couple one of these. I spent thousands of hours of testing. Really? We would test the test and test and it was jerky here was this that here their engineers are constantly 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 keeping themselves honest and, and changing and how, how much has I mean, it you've been running that, power, that day one that you ran to well, i mean oh always. I, I mean it's, it's constantly, the first time I've it's constantly, it's constantly, constantly. Uh, we're set up to where we sell direct to the boat builders um and, and they option it you know at, at various prices but at retail the system's about fifteen thousand nine hundred, and again it's that doesn't include installation, so you have your, your you know, your, the components and, and that go along with that aspect that you need to take into consideration and in, in the labor side of it, of course. Um, and then we, on the aftermarket side, we have a global dealer network set up that, you know, can retrofit our systems, service our systems, and, and, and you know, we're, we have them set up globally at really everywhere. Where there's, so where it, there's after you watch this video and you want to check it out, just go to seakeeper.com yep. and you can find, find the, the dealer, the dealer <laughs> locator or there. Or small boat sizing guide or it's sales at seakeeper.com. Yeah. And um, it, it's, I've been blown away and you guys have been doing this now for how long? I mean, we started shipping product in March of 2008. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's a, it's a proven platform. And uh, we were talking about the number of manufacturers that not standard equipment, but 
it, it's becoming very, very common on new boats in a, a yes. certain size. And now that with the Sea Keeper one going down to, you know, 23, 24, you start to be able to do it um, pretty consistently. It, it's uh, it's something worth checking out if, if seasickness and comfort is important to your family and your boating. I, any other thoughts on, on the application? Or it's all about the comfort. Um, yeah, and it, you know, the nice thing about the Sea Keeper is it, you know, it, it benefits everybody on board, not just the captain. You so if you're in a conditions where you're in rough seas, that, um, you know, that roll that you get when you're overtaking a, another boat and you kind of get in their nasty wake, um, if you're, if you're tubing and you're, you know, doing your figure eights and you're moving all around and you hit some of those big bumps that you're creating for, uh, for the tuber, um, fishing, you know, he, he was telling me that the, the top one, two or three in the bill fishing tournaments almost always have a sea keeper because one, the guys get better sleep, but two, they're just less fatigued. They can get to the lines quicker uh, and, and they're on a more stable platform. So everything is just easier. Um, he also mentioned when just he's out fishing that, uh, you know, in the rolling seas that usually you're going to have to be bow into the seas just to you know, make it reasonable um, for everybody and safe for everybody that, uh, you know, now you've only got eight foot, nine foot, whatever the beam of the boat is to work for your, for your gear. Um, but with the sea keeper, you can actually take the waves broadside, just turn that on and it's going to keep you nice and steady. Now you got the full length of the boat, um, as well as the back, um, you know, the, uh, the aft beam to work with. And, uh, and also working outriggers, you know, when you're, when you're doing work on the water and you've got a stable platform, whatever it is that, um, especially the outriggers that man, it, it just gives you, it's all easier. So the way I see it after, after experiencing it for the first time, number one is comfort. I, I mean, I think it goes without saying, um, number two is the less fatigue. And it really didn't even dawn on me until I was out on the boat. Um, you'll see in the, in the video a couple of times where I'm bracing, I'm bracing for the wake to hit at the rock to start. <laughs> And it just doesn't happen. Uh, it, it's pretty amazing. And and then the safety is third. I think it goes along with, you know, anytime you, you have a more stable platform, you're going to be safer. When your boat's not kind of rocking and rolling or, or being washed around by big, heavy chop, it's going to be a safer platform. Now, they did talk maintenance a little bit. It's a, a pretty self-contained system. I mean, it's a gyroscope in that little ball, which means it's it's technology that's been around for a long time. Uh, there's really said there's a, a thousand hour service that they like to do. Uh, but as we were talking, they really said, hey, this is we started this in 2003. We released our first product to the market in 2008. So they've been doing it for a long while. They said it's the software that they have really dialed in and improved. Obviously, they've got the patents, which, you know, there's some competition on the marketplace that's come out. And, you know, frankly, he's like, they, to get it to work as smoothly and effortlessly as we have it, um, you know, they've, they've got to stay out of our patents and, um, we've had a huge head start on the software. So, I mean, it, it really was amazing how quickly it engaged, um, how, how big of a difference it made. I was shocked. And now that they can do it on the smaller boats, um, I, I think if you're somebody that, you know, those rough seas, the fatigue, um, just the safety of it, um, uh, for the investment. Um, here's what he said is that they've got demo boats set up with their dealer network all over the place. So if you just go to their website, seekeeper.com and you look at the dealer locator, uh, you can look at the small boat sizing chart. They've got some kind of a calculator there to see if it'll fit in your boat. Um, uh, but you can just set up a demo. Uh, maybe you have to wait for an event, but if it's something you're interested in, I experiencing it firsthand is is amazing. And and I I was really impressed by the product, just knowing what it did and talking to people that have been on it, people that have sold it, um, and to experience it yourself, it was it was as advertised, if not better. Uh, and, and some circumstances that it didn't really dawn on me how much it was going to make a difference in those circumstances, or I didn't even consider it in those circumstances, but, um, you know, they, they were definitely 
definitely fantastic. Now, the price tag, uh, he said the Sea Keeper 1, which is their smallest version uh, in those boats under, I, I think, probably 30 feet and below, uh, I, I think is where it's at, down to 23, 24 feet. Um, 15900 plus the installation. So if you're putting in an aftermarket, and that's, again, where the Sea Keeper 1 uh, is at, is you can actually install it aftermarket on a boat as long as you've got those dimensions that, um, that Brock was mentioning in the video. Uh, you can do this and the installation, you've got a couple of batteries, you've got some battery cabling, a few other things, and then the rest is just labor. So if you can fit it in something that you want to check out, contact the a dealer. They've said they've got an international dealer network and, um, I, I, I am impressed. I'm glad I got to experience it firsthand, uh, because it was, uh, it was better than I expected. And I had pretty high expectations going in. So stick around to the end, uh, because, um, the guest on the, uh, on the show, Jonathan tells a little story about running a, a sea ray 650. And, uh, so stick around to that as well. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. If you've got a sea keeper, uh, let me know if you've experienced it. Let me know your experience. And, um, uh, thanks for watching <laughs> but it's not just even the software it's the you know after, at the very beginning when we first started shipping those level models we would send it back to the factory and they would rip it apart to double check and verify that we're not going to have any issues and premature wear and it, yeah. yeah they're constantly you know again putting in that extra effort to, to you know, try to make sure that that you know we're not going to run into issues here yeah and uh i'll uh i'll tell you this about seakeeper um i I've been running boats for 20 years and I took a 650 Sea Ray over to the Exumas and it was one of those days where it was questionable whether you should go or not. I was probably in 10 to 12 following sea, pair of Sea Keeper 650 Sea Ray. I mean, that boat made it, that, the Sea Keepers made it possible that day. We would not have done the trip without them. Yeah, I didn't even think about running condition. I, I think about it as you're you're sitting in in the chop and fishing oh, or something like that. But yeah. Not, so yeah. So yeah. I've, been, I've been in horrific conditions. I've run. 42 whalers all day long that had it and uh, I'll tell you what it makes a difference.